Uh, morning. Uh, my name is Alexi, and welcome to my session, Why Should You Care About Open Source Licensing? Um, so what is in our agenda today? Uh, choose the licensing for your project from scratch. Uh, which license should you choose for your project uh, if it's proprietary software? Uh, we're talking about multi-licensing also. Uh, how to manage uh, the project with different licensing? Uh, we're talking a little bit about um, compatibility of licensing uh, and how to organize licensing if a project contains fork of other open source project uh, or include uh, uh, different open source licensing. And at the end, uh, I show you a few tools uh, that helps to manage uh, different type of open source licensing. And the uh, disclaimer, uh, so information in these sessions uh, should not be considering as legal advice. Uh, just my experience, uh, best practices. Uh, uh, usually developers uh, do not often pay attention on licensing. Uh, we usually can uh, fork or download some script from the GitHub or GitLab, uh, reuse it, uh, put it in our uh, workflow, in our new application, and uh, don't pay attention uh, at it. Uh, but uh, how many of you uh, keep the copyrights of uh, work that we clone, of projects that we clone? Uh, what are requirements and obligations of different licensing? Uh, how a different licensing can affect our derived work? We will talk about it now. Uh, here is a screen of uh, Ansible. Uh, I think that uh, many of you will use it or heard about this uh, open source project. Uh, and it will be licensed and under GPL 3.0. We will talk about uh, how this, uh, this affect uh, this uh, repository and this project. Um, here is a sample about NetMiko. Uh, a session before mine, um, here a speaker talk about automation and using NetMiko. How many of you use NetMiko in your network? On? Yeah, uh, it was licensing under MIT license, um, but also in turn, NetMiko has dependencies with other project uh, that using in uh, derived work. So uh, if you go to the repository of NetMiko, you can uh, open it and see uh, what projects they also include and uh, about and what what license uh, uh, in w in which license does it uh, license it. And uh, how do we perceive information that the project is open source? Uh, first, uh, there is a list uh, of open source uh, licensing uh, on o OCI uh, site. So not e every license can be considered as open source. So we have uh, some list of open source licensing. And uh, you need to know also that the uh, license terms and uh, are enforceable copyright conditions uh, under uh, federal copyright law and enforceable under um, state law contract. Uh, a license for open source project is a legal contract uh, that regulates relationship between contributor and authors or many of authors. Yeah, and it excludes uh, the following information. Uh, descriptions of the term of use of the project, uh, including usage in commercial project. Uh, definition of what uh, can and what cannot be done with the software components. And it's uh, important, uh, as many of you working in commercial companies, uh, and you uh, should know uh, if you take some code from the GitHub, from the internet, some project, and want to use it in your uh, proprietary software, uh, in your software as a service, how does this affect and what you should to keep. And regulation of responsibility of the authors and uh, contributors uh, of the project. Um, so uh, if we start from the end, uh, let's imagine that uh, you create some, uh, some tools for automation, uh, use it uh, as a software, as a service, or sell it as, uh, under uh, some licensing, and they uh, include uh, other open source projects. 
uh, and at the end you check uh, the licensing of all lights of all open source projects that included in your uh, drive at work uh, and you find some issues license conflicts uh, or you use project without license what problems can affect this uh, first uh, you need to replace or redevelop uh, part of your source code um, in the future you also uh, can be affected by negative press coverage from for non-compliance uh, some loss of reputation with open source community so if you don't keep the copyright if you uh, not in compliance with open source uh, terms and conditions uh, it's uh, can affect uh, your reputation uh, you need to change the license of your derived work so because not uh, all licensing uh, compatible between each other and you should know how to combine it and what uh, licensing you should uh, choose for your derived work and uh, in some cases you if it's proprietary software or software as a service you'll be able to disclose your corresponding source code by request in case of uh, for example, uh, this one, GPL license is a uh, copyleft license. So uh, if your derived proprietary software include it, in some cases, uh, creators of this uh, open source project can ask you to disclose your corresponding source code. Um, the following di diagram uh, shows uh, statistics uh, date for for the licenses that I use on uh, Cisco Code Exchange platform, uh, we have uh, this platform where we gather all open source projects related to Cisco technologies. Uh, and uh, the data includes published use cases of August uh, 2022. So uh, the very popular, we have some others type and also Cisco sample code license. It's not uh, considered as open source. Uh, but the next position is uh, open source uh, licensing. Uh, MIT is very popular here. Uh, Apache 2.0, BSD, GPL. We will talk about uh, each of these licensing in a few minutes. Um, so in general, uh, license can be divided in copyleft that we talk about. For example, NetMika is licensing under copyleft. So uh, GPL, Mozilla Public License, Eclipse, CCCSA. Microsoft public license uh, and the other type of license is uh, permissive Apache MIT BSD licenses uh, permissive licenses um, copyleft can also be divided into weak and strong uh, strong include GNU GNU Afero general public license and weak for example Eclipse GNU lesser general public license for VIP, uh, for VIP copyleft uh, license, it is permissible to compile via, via dynamic linking, VIP copyleft licensing, uh, with proprietary software without requiring your proprietary software, your derived work, uh, to be licensed under the VIP copyleft license. So uh, there are a lot of open source projects that uh, include some uh, well-known libraries. Usually, it licensing under GNU, Leather General Public License. Uh, uh, till 1999, uh, it calls uh, GNU uh, Library uh, License. Uh, license text. Uh, most open source licensing that we are talking uh, before contains specific obligation concerning information and documentation. For example, many licenses require that respective license text uh, should be delivered with the software when it distributed so uh, if you copy some open source project use it in your uh, script in your proprietary of s or software as a service and want to redistribute redistribute it or uh, make it also published you should keep all this uh, data all copyrights and the license information in your derived work uh, how this looks like for example it's uh, Cisco AnyConnect secure mobile client and uh, uh, Cisco use uh, there some uh, open source project uh, open SSL toolkit and we uh, kept copyrights we 
The product includes uh, cryptographic software written by Eric Young, a male uh, software licensing about uh, and uh, name of licensing. Um, how it looks like in uh, some, uh, for example, banking application. So it's a screenshot from a mobile uh, banking application. Uh, there's a special uh, item, menu item license. If you click uh, on menu on this menu item, there is a list of all uh, projects that includes in this uh, uh, application. So it's uh, text of licensing. Uh, in in our case, it's uh, MIT licensing. Uh, copyright and the text of MIT licensing. If you scroll down, there are also Apache licensing and a lot of many other licensing. So it's uh, how uh, you can legally uh, keep uh, all copyright uh, included uh, open source project in your in your project. Uh, let's consider popular open source licensing. So we have uh, GNU general public licensing. Uh, the GPL is generally considered an uh, aggressive or viral licensing, which uh, sometimes is it's incompletable with other copyleft uh, licensing. Uh, in addition, this license um, are often called uh, also viral because it's transferred from project to project. Uh, if uh, your open source project uh, use part of project that licensing under uh, GNU GPL, your derived work also should be licensing under GNU GPL. Um, until uh, 1999, as I said before, uh, there are some, t some type of licensing that uh, called GNU Library General Public Licensing. It's a uh, weak copyleft uh, licensing. And uh, the big advantages of, the, of this licensing is that uh, uh, you can use it without affecting the license of uh, main or compiler uh, your project. So if you use uh, GNU LGPL license in your proprietary software, in your software as a service, you can license it under license what you want, including commercial one, of course. Um, if you use GPL license project in your software, uh, then your software uh, is considered as a work based on GPL. Uh, copyright and patents usage rights are unregulated. Um, in this case, who the monitors uh, the GPL's project remain copyleft? Uh, there are various organizations that uh, track this. Uh, also, there are a lot of uh, software evangelists who create this project, who contribute in copyleft project, who use this licensing. Uh, also, there are uh, organizations, free software foundations. Uh, its organizations own uh, a lot of rights of, uh, and parts of GNU system uh, projects. We talk about uh, GNU lesser general public licensing before. Uh, and w which project licensing under uh, GNU GPL? It's uh, Linux kernel, a lot of you use this. Uh, WordPress, uh, well-known uh, uh, site engine building. Uh, Solidity, the smart contract for programming languages. Uh, Grafana, it's tool uh, for visualization, licensing under uh, GNU Affair, general public license. And Messenger Signal, licensing also under GNU Affair, general public licensing. Um, last few years, there are tendency to choose Apache to Dato for the most of open source proje projects. Uh, unlike other permissive uh, licensing, it has uh, clause three. It it called grant of patent licensing, uh, which refers to patents. Uh, the clause governs the disposal of patents, uh, and there is a statement that participants grant permission to use any of their patents that may relate it to their contribution. For example, if you own uh, three, four patents. Uh, for related to code or uh, to some functions, and you're contributing to uh, some uh, open source project that licensing under Apache 2.0, you grant permissions and then um, 
owners don't have a problem when you asking that, hey, you, you use my patent. You contributing in this project under Apache 2.0 and you grant permission to use any of your uh, patents. That is why it's uh, very likely uh, now in, uh, in open source community and uh, also a lot of uh, commercial company licensing their open source project under this uh, licensing. Uh, and of course, the popularity of uh, this license is constantly growing, uh, not last uh, because of uh, uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation use it as a base licensing. So uh, a lot of projects like Prometheus, Kubernetes, licensing under Apache 2.0. MIT, uh, I, I like it uh, at all for using my, for, for simple script, for automation, for my pet project, uh, because it's, it's simple. Uh, they allow you to do whatever you want with code. Uh, only one requirement is uh, keep the original license and the attribution information. Uh, and uh, in a nutshell, it uh, straightforward, uh, does not require add some notice file. As uh, in this example, uh, you should add also in the root directory of your repository in GitLab, in GitHub, uh, notice file with uh, copyright. In this case, uh, copyright uh, includes in uh, license itself, as I, sh as I show you here. So here is the uh, name of license and copyright. In, in Apache 2.0, we need also uh, put uh, additional notice file. And project using MIT, Visual Studio Code. I, uh, how many of you use, using Visual user, use Code? Can you raise your hand? So yeah, it's licensing, licensing under MIT. Uh, Julia language, uh, Electron, Angular JS, and Rails, and a lot of uh, different others, uh, JavaScript and programming framework, licensing under MIT license. Uh, you also need to know that um, there are some projects that automatically apply the specific licensing. Uh, for example, uh, ICS licensing is the default license when you use uh, and set up a new NPM package. So uh, for those of you who uh, use uh, Node.js uh, in your in your work or uh, clone some projects that use Node.js Node by default when you uh, start uh, npm init command it will be licensing on the ICS license it's uh, identical to MIT license uh, code pens uh, it's uh, it's a solution uh, that can help you to run code in some sandboxes uh, all code that you write there automatically uh, licensing under MIT license. And uh, I also ask you to pay attention on all tools uh, uh, that you use online or uh, on your uh, laptop. Uh, uh, usually, it, if you create some codes, uh, mostly it connected with open source, uh, with op online open source uh, sites or platforms. It also licensing under some type of licensing. And uh, you also need to know if you want to copy some part of codes, uh, it's also protected by default by some uh, open source licensing and copyrights. Uh, yeah, and the very interesting uh, uh, questions uh, that I also in investigate. Uh, usually, I found some code in uh, GitHub and GitLab uh, without licensing. It's really good. Cool, cool some scripts, but uh, creator and uh, or different authors uh, forgot to add some uh, related, uh, related licensing, open source licensing. Uh, yeah, and uh, what we should do in this case, uh, if project is published without license, uh, the product can be used. Uh, by default, the software is protected by exclusive copyrights. Uh, and without licensing, uh, its usage is illegal so um, if you have a legal department in your company or you want to reuse it uh, uh, for your personal use it's uh, really a uh, big challenge and uh, I, uh, it's very hard to you to use uh, to reuse a project without any licensing um, compatibility of licensing. Um, there are some services. Uh, Black Duck Audit Service uh, found that 53% of uh, audited code base in 2021 contained open source uh, code uh, with conflicting licensing. Uh, 
20% uh, uh, of uh, this code base had open source project without licensing that we uh, talked before. So it's, uh, it's a really big issue. Uh, and uh, in general, 97% uh, of commercial code contains uh, some various part of open source project. Uh, and most of uh, licensing protect uh, and uh, ensure authors. Uh, it's uh, like uh, general and uh, general rule, rule. Uh, protect authors from possible low suite or damage that may be caused during the usage of open source components in your project. So if you read uh, uh, licensing text of uh, MIT, GNU, GPL, uh, a lot of license, uh, all of licensing that we consider as open source, uh, it protect uh, contributors from um, possible low suites or damages. So you, you are protected if you are a contributor to open source project, so uh, don't worry. Uh, and the following diagrams uh, show an example of uh, compatibility license. Uh, so in this, uh, in th if the license contain, if the licenses are compatible in our case, uh, there is an arrow among them. So for example, BSD two that two clause compatible with uh, BSD three clause. Uh, the direction of arrow indicates the most uh, substantial license. Uh, a substantial and strong or, or inclusive license is a license that essentially includes all the key information about another license. Uh, MIT compatible with Apache. Uh, in this case, uh, the direction of arrow show most stronger licensing. So uh, usually copyleft uh, licensing uh, uh, are very very strong, and you see that all arrows goes to this uh, copyleft licensing, like GNU, GPL, uh, version 3.0, version version uh, 2.0. <coughs> uh, what about multiple licenses uh, to uh, uh, add multiple licensing to to a GitHub project? Um, it, it also very interesting uh, point that uh, uh, you can licensing your project under a few licensing. For example, under you can choose one uh, copyleft license, one permissive license, and then uh, your uh, users, uh, open source community, can choose which one, uh, which of this licensing uh, they should choose. Um, a multi licensing, for example, in, the in GitHub, uh, you must name your license file with uh, uh, keywords like license or copyright, or license or copying, for example, license.bst, license uh, under dash MIT, and put it in the root of your directory. Uh, an excellent example of how to organize uh, multiple licensing can be found, for example, at RocksDB. Here is how it looks like. So it's screenshot from GitHub. Here is a uh, name of licensing. And if it's licensing under a few of uh, different open source licensing, there is a um, hyperlink. If you click, there is dialog window with the name of licensing. If you click on it, you uh, deep dive in uh, text with uh, related copyrights. And uh, multi-licensed project with uh, forks, for example, there are a lot of uh, projects that fork uh, others open source project and uh, you reuse it uh, in your own uh, network, in your own product. Uh, when open source project contains fork of other project, uh, there are uh, next uh, requirements. Uh, you need to create, uh, for example, separate di directory where you place uh, the licenses of, uh, of project, uh, text of licensing of, uh, of the project uh, that's used in your derived work. And uh, here is a, a few examples. Uh, it's Elasticsearch. So if you open uh, uh, Elasticsearch uh, client, REST client, there is a, a licensing uh, for each component, uh, so it keep um, copyright of all uh, open source project and tools that in, uh, use it by this Elasticsearch uh, project. And you can open it, uh, it's a notice file, license text with copyright, it's uh, how in, in open source you should keep, uh, keep the license text and the copyrights. 
Uh, and the recommended practice uh, is a add a proprietary uh, license of copyright information to each code files uh, as shown in the following examples. So is, you have some, a lot of source, uh, source files in your big open source project, or it's a, for example, it's a script with uh, only one file. Uh, at the header, you should uh, put your um, copyright. In, in your case, it should be, uh, for example, your name, yeah, or name of your organization, uh, and the name of licensing. Uh, it's help also when people want to reuse some part of your project uh, or you want to reuse. Uh, it should be keep it and uh, informed people who use open source projects that it's licensing. Uh, under related license and uh, and have uh, related copyrights. What about uh, changing the licensing? So there are some cases that you create your work and uh, you find some issues, compatibility issues, or uh, some other reason, and you need you want to to uh, ch change uh, uh, licensing. Uh, the short answer is yes, you, you can, but um, there are uh, a few restrictions. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to uh, ch change licensing uh, when you have a lot of contributors, you need to ask them, can you change uh, licensing of uh, the derived work to, to new one? Uh, also, there are uh, some cases when uh, users uh, and contributors uh, uh, assign to you all rights to changing licensing. Uh, if, uh, for example, sign some contributor license agreement related, um, then uh, owners and maintainers, authors, main authors of open source project can uh, change it uh, without uh, any approval from other other authors and contributors. Um, here is an example when a big open source project changed uh, their licensing. For example, Facebook uh, was using BSD license pl plus their custom uh, additional grant of patent rights. Uh, and a lot of commercial companies don't want to use it because it's, uh, there are special restrictions in this uh, additional grant of uh, patent rights. And the uh, license was changed uh, to MIT in September uh, 20. 17, uh, and the, this uh, patent grant was deleted. Um, here is how it looks like if you uh, open a related uh, commit, you see that it was uh, changed from BSD license to MIT license uh, with removed related uh, uh, sections. And a very interesting uh, also topic, open source policies in commercial company. Some companies usually create uh, their uh, licensing policies, uh, which uh, project with which license you can use, which cannot use. Um, the policies describe uh, procedures and requirements for publishing project. Uh, in addition, also requirements for licensing that uh, you should use or can use in your, uh, in your project. Uh, usually company have also block and allow list. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of uh, uh, commercial companies uh, uh, not good with uh, copyleft licensing uh, like GNU because uh, they can cause some uh, legal issues. Uh, here I prepared you a table uh, and I give you an example of list of licensing uh, with a level of risk related r relative to the uses in proprietary software. Uh, so we have high, high risk, high risky uh, Licensing open source, uh, it's copyleft. It's uh, Microsoft uh, MSRL license, GNU, Leather General Public license, uh, GNU GPL, uh, and low risk. Uh, so that is why uh, a lot of commercial company uh, like this licensing, and uh, there is no problem to use it in uh, proprietary software in, in company as a part of your uh, solutions that you want to sell. It's MIT, Apache 2.0, uh, two, uh, two close BSD, uh, three close BSD, and uh, medium, uh, there are uh, some weak, also some weak copyleft license. Uh, yeah, and uh, 
for those of you who use it uh, Stack Overflow when you create some scripts or some uh, some work, it's uh, good to know that according to the term of service, all content created on this platform, uh, including questions and answers, uh, is licensing under attribution shade alike for that O international. Uh, so, and using uh, Stack Overflow snippets can be a problem for your company legals department. So, uh, usually it's uh, not a good case when you copy some code from uh, Stack Overflow and put it in your uh, proprietary software because it's uh, uh, licensing also under related license and they have some uh, restrictions. Um, what about tools? Uh, how you can analyze your projects that you create? Uh, which uh, license do you using in your uh, software, in your derived at work? Um, here is a few tools uh, that I have tested. The uh, first one has uh, also uh, free credits. Um, uh, you can log in it, uh, put your uh, link on your open source project and uh, uh, see uh, report uh, with dependencies uh, which libraries uh, or packages using in your uh, open source project, uh, uh, where is uh, possibility conflicts, uh, um, some notification, a lot of uh, security analysis uh, like uh, MENT, uh, SNEAK also um, has a related um, solution to analyze uh, uh, open source licensing uh, compatibility between it uh, uh, and give you full report. Uh, and uh, we also uh, in Cisco has uh, have code exchange uh, this is a platform where we gather open source project uh, related to Cisco technologies, and we usually also pay attention on copyrights. Uh, so all projects that you can find on this platform uh, are usually copyright uh, on related licensing, and you um, don't have uh, the problem to use it uh, in your in your network, uh, in your proprietary software. We pay attention on it, and it's uh, one of uh, uh, requirements uh, of checklist uh, when we uh, review our projects. Uh, okay, uh, so we have uh, a few minutes, and, and I can... Ah, oh, we don't have... Oh, sorry, sorry. 